AOC made some allegations of her own about a, a fellow congressperson. She said the congressman Yoho, Ted Yoho, made some statements to her that were abusive, derogatory. And she went public about those statements today on the Hill. I got a clip of it. And uh, check it out for yourself. Tough, tough, tough. About two days ago, I was walking up the steps of the Capitol when Representative Yoho um, suddenly turned a corner um, and he was accompanied by Representative Roger Williams and accosted me on the steps right here in front of our nation's Capitol. I was minding my own business, walking up um, the steps, and Representative Yoho put his finger in my face. He called me disgusting. He called me crazy. He called me out of my mind. Um, and he called me dangerous. And then he took a few more steps. And after I had recognized his, uh, after I had recognized his, his comments as rude, he walked away and said, I'm rude. You're calling me rude. I took a few steps ahead and I walked inside and cast my vote. Um, because my constituents send me here each and every day to fight for them. I walked back out and there were reporters in the front of the Capitol and in front of reporters, Representative Yoho called me, and I quote, a fucking bitch. These are the words that Representative Yoho levied against a congresswoman. The congresswoman that not only represents New York's 14th congressional district, but every congresswoman and every woman in this country, because all of us have had to deal with this in some form, some way, some shape, at some point in our lives. And I wanna be clear that Representative Yoho's comments were not deeply hurtful or piercing to me, because I have worked a working class job I have waited tables in restaurants. I have ridden the subway. I have walked the streets in New York City. And this kind of language is not new. I have encountered words uttered by Mr. Yoho and men uttering the same words as Mr. Yoho while I was being harassed in restaurants. I have tossed men out of bars that have used language like Mr. Yoho's. And I have encountered this type of harassment riding the subway in New York City. This is not new. And that is the problem. Mr. Yoho was not alone. He was walking shoulder to shoulder with Representative Roger Williams. And that's when we start to see that this issue is not about one incident. It is cultural. It is a culture of lack of impunity, of accepting of violence and violent language against women in an entire structure of power that supports that. Because not only have I been spoken to disrespectfully, particularly by members of the Republican Party and elected officials in the Republican Party, not just here, but the President of the United States last year told me to go home to another country is the implication that I don't even belong in America. The governor of Florida, Governor DeSantis, before I even was sworn in, called me a whatever that is. Dehumanizing language is not new. And what we are seeing is that incidents like these are happening in a pattern. This is a pattern of, of an attitude towards women and dehumanization of others. So while I was not deeply hurt or offended by little comments that are made, when I was reflecting on this, I, I honestly thought that I, I was just gonna pack it up and go home. It's just another day, right? But then yesterday, Representative Yoho decided to come to the floor of the House of Representatives and make excuses for his behavior. 
Uh, Mr. Speaker, I stand before you this morning to address the strife I injected into the already contentious Congress. I have worked with many members in this chamber over the past four terms, members on both sides of the aisle, and each of you know that I'm a man of my word. So let me take a moment to address this body. I rise to apologize for the abrupt manner of the conversation I had with my colleague from New York. It is true that we disagree on policies and visions for America, but that does not mean we should be disrespectful. Having been married for 45 years with two daughters, I'm very cognizant of my language. The offensive name-calling uh, words attributed to me by the press were never spoken to my colleagues, and if they were construed that way, I apologize for their misunderstanding. As my colleagues know, I'm passionate about those affected by poverty. My wife Carolyn and I started out together at the age of 19 with nothing. We did odd jobs, and we were on food stamps. I know the face of poverty, and for a time it was mine. That is why I know people in this country can still, with all its faults, rise up and succeed and not be encouraged to break the law. I will commit to each of you that I will conduct myself from a place of passion and understanding that policy and political disagreement be vigorously debated with the knowledge that we approach the problems facing our nation with the betterment of the country in mind and the people we serve. I cannot apologize for my passion or for loving my God, my family, and my country. I yield back. And that I could not let go. I could not allow my nieces, I could not allow the little girls that I go home to, I could not allow victims of verbal abuse and worse to see that, to see that excuse, and to see our Congress accept it as legitimate and accept it as an apology and to accept silence as a form of acceptance. I could not allow that to stand, which is why I am rising today to raise this point of personal privilege. And I do not need Representative Yoho to apologize to me. Clearly, he does not want to. Clearly, when given the opportunity, he will not. And I will not stay up late at night waiting for an apology from a man who has no remorse over calling women and using abusive language towards women. But what I do have issue with is using women, our wives, and daughters as shields and excuses for poor behavior. Mr. Yoho mentioned that he has a wife and two daughters. I am two years younger than Mr. Yoho's youngest daughter. I am someone's daughter, too. My father, thankfully, is not alive to see how Mr. Yoho treated his daughter. My mother got to see Mr. Yoho's disrespect on the floor of this house towards me on television. And I am here because I have to show my parents that I am their daughter and that they did not raise me to accept abuse from men. Now, what I am here to say is that this harm that Mr. Yoho levied, it tried to levy against me, was not just an incident directed at me. But when you do that to any woman, what Mr. Yoho did was give permission to other men to do that to his daughters. He gave, in using that language in front of the press, he gave permission to use that language against his wife, his daughters, women in his community. And I am here to stand up to say that is not acceptable. I do not care what your views are. It does not matter how much I disagree or how much it incenses me or how much I feel that people are dehumanizing others. I will not do that myself. I will not allow people to change and create hatred in our hearts. And so what I believe is that having a daughter 
does not make a man decent. Having a wife does not make a decent man. Treating people with dignity and respect makes a decent man. And when a decent man messes up, as we all are bound to do, he tries his best and does apologize. Not to save face, not to win a vote. He apologizes genuinely to repair and acknowledge the harm done so that we can all move on. Lastly, what I want to express to Mr. Yoho is gratitude. I want to thank him for showing the world that you can be a powerful man and accost women. You can have daughters and accost women without remorse. You can be married and accost women. You can take photos and project an image to the world of being a family man and accost women without remorse and with a sense of impunity. It happens every day in this country. It happened here on the steps of our nation's capital. It happens when, the, when individuals who hold the highest office in this land admit, admit to hurting women and using this language against all of us. Yoho fired back, claiming that she has no right to inflate, talk about his family, or give an account that did not happen for political gain. The congressman added that he would not apologize for something he didn't say and insisted no one was accosted, bullied, or attacked. But, Mike, let me just get the bookkeeping point done here. Uh, the accuracy of your reporting, the accuracy of the way the congresswoman described it uh, on the floor today. A thousand percent accurate, without a doubt, in, in, in my mind. Um, she was going up the stairs. He was coming down the stairs. This was the first vote after they, you know, they'd been gone for a couple weeks uh, for the Fourth of July recess. This was the first vote when they came back. It was Monday morning, um, and they were having this conversation on the stairs at the Capitol. I could tell that it was uh, it was less than cordial. You could see that after not too long. You could see that they were talking about policing, crime, poverty, um, and they had some choice, they had some choice words for each other. Um, but no, nothing, nothing, there were no curse words that I heard uh, to each other's face. And as she went up the stairs to go vote and he came down the stairs towards me, um, you could hear very clearly uh, that he said those words. Again, I want to I want to emphasize that they were not to her directly. They were not to her face, um, but they were a reference to her. And that is what has touched a nerve. OK, so. Every man is not me and I am not every man. When I worked in Washington, D.C., I was always very careful with my language, almost to the point of being considered a nerd, because I see so many brothers, particularly black brothers, get in so much trouble by the slightest misinterpretation of what you mean or what you're saying or someone taking it the wrong way. I've seen so many brothers lose their jobs. Working in Washington, D.C. for my entire career, before I started doing this, that's where I worked, and I'm telling you, I was always Aired on the side of calling women that was on, were even younger than me, ma'am. No one's thinking you're sexy if you're calling them ma'am and they're younger than you, younger than you. <laughs> but that's what I would do because I was always worried of it. So this is not typical behavior. Don't get it. Like I see some people in the comment section, like, yeah, AOC standing up for women. Now she's standing up. Yeah, she's standing up for women. She's standing up for herself in this instance against a specific person. Okay, because this is not typical culture in D.C. where men just walk around. Now, maybe powerful white men do it, but I don't know. Un disempowered white men don't do it. Okay, they don't walk around. Disempowered white men on jobs who can get fired don't walk around using the B word, you know, saying F and B. And neither do disempowered black men or disempowered anybody. Okay, so that's not typical. Now, there's a lot of dirtiness going on in Washington, D.C., but this is not something you hear often. Okay. Uh, having worked there for 20 years and the Department of Justice for a point in time. I do like what she said, what she, what she pointed out, that Yoho's response that he has a wife and he has a daughter 
don't have anything to do with it. That has nothing to do with anything. Yeah, a lot of, you know, rapists, you know, the, Jack the Ripper probably had a wife, didn't he? Like, there are people who have wives and do all types of stuff to women. That doesn't mean anything. And people say, I've got kids. Well, okay. How do you treat them? I don't know. What, what does that mean? So I'm glad she brought that point up. Just for basic, for, you know, for general practices. I'm glad to hear that because I get tired of hearing that statement as if that means something. And for the record, guys, let, let's make this clear as well. The same thing goes for women. Just because you're a woman doesn't mean you're a good person. It doesn't mean you're right. It doesn't mean you're saintly. Okay? That's not what makes you a good person. Being a good person is what makes you a good person. And it's not about what you think. It's about what you do. And sometimes it's about why you do it. Because some people do good things just to take advantage of you. Some people do, do good things just to manipulate you. There's all types of reasons for people to do things. Sometimes people need to channel why they do good things. Same thing holds true when it comes to color. Hey, it holds true. Like just because you're just because you're a dad doesn't mean you're good. Just because you're a, a dad, a girl dad doesn't mean that you treat young women well. And just because you're black doesn't mean you support black people issues or that you support black people in general. Just because you have brown skin, I mean, we can do this all day. But it's important that people get it. How many times do I have to hear about, well, this person is this, so let's let this person speak for all black people? Well, the same thing holds true. The same way AOC is saying it's because this man is married does not mean he treats all women with respect. In fact, how you treat somebody who you're upset with, how you treat somebody that you don't have a connection to, is a better barometer for how you really are. So it's easy to treat people that, you know, that you love well. Not so easy to treat people well that you don't like. Ah, I have no idea what was said in this interaction. I do find it difficult. And I know there's people out there, some people that I know that, you know, have issues with AOC for various reasons. Hey, you don't know what happened. Um, neither do I. But I find it very hard to to square in my head that a person would make this much of a statement about an issue to, or statement that was never made, if there was no pointing in her face, if there was no belittlement, she would actually be that brazen that she would just pick any person and say, this person, you know, basically, you know, went at me. I didn't know who Representative Yohu was until today when AOC clobbered him on the House floor. If you want to know if there's an incentive to go after AOC, maybe that would be it. You know, rise to the a point of awareness. Could be, could be, I, I don't know. But I just know I never heard of the guy before. Now, if you live in Florida, maybe you know who he is, unless I hope you do. He's your, one of your representatives. But to the rest of the country, if they're anything like me, they're wondering what part of Yahoo stock or Yahoo did what? That's what I was, Yahoo who yay? I thought he was gonna be a uh, Asian guy or something. I don't know. No yo who's a yahoo's a e ha he ha who ha who ha who's. So anyway, uh, Marcus the villain. AOC is distracting. We get called the N word every day on YouTube and such, and that doesn't distract us from trying to get changed. People before feels. Nah, Marcus. Nah, Marcus. If hold on a second. Hold on, man. See, this is. No, no. If, okay, if, uh, let's see, if Jim Clyburn was walking to the hill and, I don't know, Ted Cruz walked up to him and called him the N-word, you'd hear about it. And you wouldn't be like, what Jim Clyburn doing talking about Ted Cruz calling him the N-word? I don't know. If a Barbara Lee was walking to the hill and, I don't know, what's a piece of crap? Who's a scumbag? If Mitch McConnell said, oh, okay, oh, oh, well, look at you, Barbara. Barbara, you are a mammy. You be out of my way. I'd want to know about it. And I know what, and I know if she talked about it, you wouldn't be like, stop complaining, Barbara Lee. 
We get called in words sometimes. Why you care about that? Nah, bruh. So let's not be, see, this is, we can't do this. What we have to do is put ourselves in the position of the people that we're supporting and put them in the, put your, put yourself in their position and say, how would you feel if it was something damaging to you? And what random people say to you on YouTube, they don't owe you nothing. We talk about somebody you work with. If somebody at your job calls you an N-word that worked with you, that wasn't a customer, you'd be like, hold on a second. So, man, look, I know that, I, I'm, I know you You got to be trolling. You can't be real. You spend $5, you spend, spend $10 to say that garbage comment, man. Think about what I'm saying. Reevaluate yourself, okay? You don't create, we need to be allies to everyone. Like, we, we, need, we want allies. You got to be an ally to, be, to get allies. Let's work together. And plus, right is right, wrong is wrong, man. All right.